Chris, I know David still has a little ways to go on the court, but in your experience, how rare is it to, to have a freshman who comes in that seems this ready to, to step into a, a leadership role, even though he might not be in a leadership role on the floor? Um, I, I wouldn't say he's in a leadership role. I, certainly, you play the point guard position. Uh, you're asked to direct and uh, run the offense. So I, I guess in that sense, he's, he's certainly asked to uh, you know, lead the offense. But, we have several guys that are obviously a lot more experienced and, and are more in leadership positions. But David's a really good player. Um, I've had a lot of freshmen throughout my career that have made impacts on teams. And you know, hopefully as his injury becomes a, a really far thing in the past, he continues to progress and, and give our team more and more. He gave himself a C- in that game. Have you been impressed with what he's seen out of last game? Yeah. Um, you know, as I said in the press conference, I think David made some good plays and, and made some uh, not so good plays. But that, that's to be expected a little bit. And I want to be able to give him uh, some freedom out there to, uh, <coughs> to make mistakes, you know, to play through them. Uh, I think, you know, long term, his potential is through the roof. And uh, so as long as he's given great effort and practice, he's improving, uh, then I want to be able to figure out a way to get him on the floor at times. Can we expect to see him uh, out there tomorrow about the same amount of minutes as the other night? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I think that David's earned the right to play, and if he plays well, then, then he'll stay in like most guys. So Fresh hasn't scored a ton lately, but, you know, he's a senior point guard or graduate transfer. What, have you been happy with what he's brought to the table? Yeah, I think that um, – the one thing he provides is usually a calming influence. He's also a, uh, a very good defender, a player that understands our system on the defensive end. I think his, his adjustment to our program and our defensive principles has been uh, as seamless as it gets. You know, I do think he has to play a little better offensively, uh, but uh, I think he's more than capable of it. He's played in a lot of games throughout his career, and our team's counting on him to do that. And so, uh, you know, that's what practice is for. What have you seen on tape from uh, Miami of Ohio, Chris? I think they're a talented team. Um, you know, the kid Nike is you know, being looked at by NBA teams because of his athleticism. Uh, he's a downhill driver that still has the ability to make uh, three-point shots. Um, his athleticism is extremely impressive. Uh, they've got some young guys that can that can shoot the ball. Uh, you know, I think uh, the kid Delonte Brown's our second-leading scorer. Uh, he's sort of a live wire a guy that can do a little bit inside, uh, some damage on the outside. I think Bam Bowman, uh, although undersized in terms of his height, is really crafty, um, uses his body well, uh, can stretch the defense from the three-point line. So, uh, you know, I think Jack's doing a really good job. Uh, you know, they lost a few in a row, but I think, again, they, they have some young players, and uh, they're only going to get better and better. So uh, they have our, our full attention tomorrow night. Chris Steven had a really good game the last time out. Is there something in his play that kind of tips you off to say, okay, he's engaged, he, he's ready to have a big night? Because at times he seems to be just hard to stop. Yeah, I think uh, Steve's aggressiveness on offense, uh, when he's really posting hard and wanting the ball, um, and you know, not just hanging out. I think that really that's who we've seen Steve be all year maybe outside of a few moments. And I think he's gotten a lot better defensively. He still has a little ways to go, but where he is right now versus a year ago, I think is markedly better. And so it's, it's a lot easier to have him on the floor when, when uh, he's effective at both ends of the floor. But I think Steve's played well for the most part on offense. At times, our team doesn't look for him enough. Um, and it's chicken or the egg. Is he, is he calling for it? Is he making himself available? Is he posting big? But he's doing that a heck of a lot harder and more often this year than he did a year ago. Because you talked about having your full attention. Do you have to worry about a 10-day break, Christmas, the holidays, this time of year, keeping guys focused? I mean, I don't know if you'll give them time off, but do you have to worry about that at all going into a game like this? Um, you know, we talked about it. I mean, I can't, you can only control so much. Uh, we're going to pour every bit of ourselves into the preparation for Miami of Ohio and then when the game's over um, you know we'll figure out we're going to reconvene I'll give them a few days off but um, you know we talked about finishing uh, 
finishing this part of the schedule, knowing that there's a little bit of a break before we play our next game. And uh, I'd like to think that the maturity that I have in the locker room understands that. And, and, um, and we play well and play hard tomorrow. It's the next to last non-conference game, obviously. Have you gotten what you wanted to get out of your non-conference schedule? Well, it's not over. Um, so I, I don't know what I wanted. I wanted to win every game. But um, I think that we've got Malik and David healthy. I think we've got them really good minutes. And, you know, tried to fit them in and transition to the team as best we could. And, uh, you know, we still have a ways to go to develop our team and improve in areas. And uh, I don't expect that improvement uh, to really stop. And so we've got a long break where our guys aren't in classes. We've got to use that wisely uh, to become better players and a better team. You know, you weren't happy the other night with some of the offensive rebounds that you gave up. Now that you've had a chance to, to watch the tape, is there anything you noticed as to why that was happening so much? Our guards got to help. Uh, a lot of those rebounds were long, scrambled rebounds, not above the rim or around the basket, but out near the foul line. And you know, a few of our guards were leaking out. And so we have to sustain blockouts. Uh, we have to have a five-man mentality of a sealing the uh, possession and not just counting on Steve or Jordan or Dwayne to finish it. And then I think there were times where you know, we had two hands on it, uh, they had two hands on it, and, uh, and they came up with it. And that's something that we have to change. you got two non-conference games to go. When you look back, to, is your team about where you thought it would be? Is there any areas you're better than you thought they'd be or areas where you feel like you've got more growth than you, than you worried? Um, you know, I still think our, our freshmen have to improve. Uh, I want to be able to use those guys in stretches. Um, you know, again, I think that's that's the knock on freshmen. They're not very consistent at times, and, and you're not really sure what you're going to get. But I think they're um, figuring it out. They don't have much opportunity on the floor for upperclassmen. Um, you know, it's, so it's really hard to forecast maybe a team that has – you know, seven returning guys and then six or seven you know, new guys uh, about where we would be. But I'm glad that we're what I believe is a really good defensive team. Uh, and at times when we play together on the offensive end, really difficult to contend with. So that's who we have to be moving forward. Any other questions? Anyone? Come back here. Coach, you had some players with you uh, at your uh, coach's corner book opening yesterday. Do you learn anything about those guys when you see them out with people and kids and that kind of stuff? Uh, well, it's not anything that I didn't know prior to, um, you know, the coach's corner. We, we got some great guys in our locker room. Um, you know, very, very you know, well-raised young men. I mean, you see them in all different facets. I mean, I see them. 80% of my interaction with them is on the basketball court or in the office and talking basketball, but there's, you know, there's so much more to each of those guys than just who they are as a basketball player. And when you get to have the opportunity to hang out with them and, and, and do a service project uh, like we did the other day, um, you know, it just reminds you um, that, uh, of who they are as people. And th those guys were awesome with the kids. You know, they weren't just sort of checking the box. And, um, you know, you could see how much impact they had on those fifth graders. And I'm sure our guys remember what it was like to be in fifth grade. I don't, but uh, God darn it, so long ago. But it's, it's a lot closer for them. And, and I think they see a little bit of themselves in those kids. And I think that's why it was so uh, enjoyable for those guys to, uh, to do what they did the other day. I appreciate you asking that. Chris, my last question. If if you were calling plays for Scott Satterfield, how many times would you go deep? <laughs> uh, a hell of a lot more than he does. <laughs> that was always my answer in football. Just throw the bomb, you know, but I got vetoed by Coach of the Year, so. No, it's, um, I don't know, that's how you play, man. Just go deep. Just go deep. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>